everyone, welcome. In this video, you'll be learning how to create an NFT and deliver it to a wallet address or an email address using Crossman's Mint API. Now, before we begin, please ensure that you have an account created on Crossman's console. If you do not have an account created on Crossmint, please create one using the link in the description. I would also like to mention that Crossmint offers two consoles. One is the staging environment, which is for development and testing purposes. And the second one is production. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to use the Mint API using the staging environment. If you want to try this API, please head to Crossmint staging console and create a developer account before we proceed. So let's get started. As you can see that I'm already on the staging console. I'm going to quickly click on API keys. And once I have navigated to API key, I need to create a new API key. So now I'm going to click on create new key. And then I'm going to click on minting API. And then I'm going to select nfts.create, which would be mint NFTs. And then nfts.read, which would be read NFTs. And now that I've selected both of these functionalities, I'm going to click on create server key. All right. So the API key has been created. Now you need to open your code editor and write a simple function that creates an NFT and delivers it to a user. So I'm going to quickly open my visual studio code environment, and then let me create a new code file. I'm going to name it as mint nft.js since it's going to be a JavaScript code file. All right, so now that we have created the JavaScript file, I'm quickly going to paste the code because we do not need to change much. If you're wondering where I got this code from, this is something you can find on the Crossman's documentation. So I'm going to quickly open it on a new tab and show you where you can find it. So once you're on the documentation, you need to scroll down to minting tools and you need to click on quick start. Once you scroll down, you can find the entire code sample that we have given here. So this is the sample code that we will be following in this tutorial. So feel free to copy and paste this into your terminal and proceed with the rest of the tutorial. Okay, so now that we have this out of the way, I'm going to open the Visual Studio code again. And here you can see that the code sample includes everything from API key, chain, environment, recipient email, and recipient address. So I'm going to teach you how you can populate this. So first you need to copy and paste your API key here. So I'm going to quickly switch back to the staging console and I'm going to copy and paste the API key that I just created. Also note that this is not the best practice when you're configuring API keys within your code. This is not secure since this can get leaked if you push it to GitHub or anywhere else. And if this API key gets leaked, anyone can use this API key and bill you for it. So please ensure you follow the best practices when you're working with API keys. So now that we have populated the API key, I'm going to tell you what the variable chain stands for. So this is a constant variable which declares or specifies which blockchain will the NFT be created on. And for simplicity purpose, we're going to just leave it as Polygon, but you can change it to Solana, Ethereum, or any other blockchain of your preference. If you're wondering about the different types of blockchains that Crossman supports, you can find more information about this on our documentation. And the ENV is nothing but the environment. So the environment is staging, but if you're using production, you can simply replace this with production. And now you need to declare the recipient email, which is another constant variable. So the recipient email is the email ID that you want to send and deliver this NFT to. So you'll be creating and delivering the NFT to this particular email address that you declare here. So I'm going to give my postal email. You can replace this with your target email address if you're using this for testing purposes. And then the recipient address simply formats this and parses the recipient email along with the chain. And this is something that will be parsed in our API call. All right, so now that we have this code part populated, I'm going to quickly skip this part because all of this usually remains the same. And now you need to focus on the metadata. So the metadata is where you configure the name of the NFT, the image that will go behind the NFT and the description. So all of this is what actually represents your NFT. So let me give the name as video test NFT. So the image needs to be, so the image needs to be a URL that redirects you to the picture that you want to use for your NFT. This could also be a video file, and this could also be something that you select from your local environment, and you can simply paste the directory for that here. 
and the description would be anything that you want. So I'm going to replace the description as testing cross mints mint API. And now that I've populated the metadata, the API call should be good to go. And the recipient address is something we've already configured here, which is my email address following the chain, which is Polygon. So now I'm going to open the terminal and I'm going to run this code. I'm simply going to run node mint nft.js and this executes the JavaScript file on our terminal. And you can wait for a few seconds and it'll catch the action ID property, ID on chain status, everything from whether the contract has been deployed and which chain it was deployed to. And you can see that the contract has successfully been deployed. I would like to mention that you need to quickly copy the action ID because we'll be using it for another code section later. So I'm going to declare action ID is equal to and paste it here. And once I've copied the action ID in my code file, I'm quickly going to save it. And behind the scenes, the API deploys a smart contract for your NFT if you don't have one. So you can notice that this is the contract address that was deployed on the Polygon Mumbai testnet. It also validates and uploads your metadata to decentralized storage, which is IPFS in our case. And this also helps you mint an NFT on the blockchain of your choice behind the scenes. And if you're minting to an email address, it creates a wallet for the user address that is accessible from crossman.com. So you simply need to go to crossman.com and log in with the same email that was that the NFT was minted to, and you can find your NFT there. And then it sends the NFT to that particular wallet address. And that's how easy and simple it is to use Crossman's Mint API. And you can see how powerful it is because it simply abstracts away all this with a single API call. And now we're going to run another piece of code. So I'm going to go back to the documentation here, and then I'm going to copy the skull code. What the skull code is going to be used for is to fetch the status of the NFT minting process and see whether the NFT was successfully minted or not. So we have to replace our API key here. So I'm going to show you how that looks like. So I'm going to remove your API key and I'm going to go back to my staging console and I'm going to copy and paste my secret key. And once I've pasted this, I also need to paste the action ID. So the action ID is here. You could either copy it from the terminal or you could copy it from the code file. Like I mentioned before, either works, but you simply need to replace the mint action ID at the end of the staging URL, as I'm going to show you right now. So you remove this and then you simply paste the mint action ID. All right, now I'm going to quickly run the skull code and I need to press enter in order to do that. And you can see that it returns the action ID and it shows the action, which was nfts.create and the status says succeeded, which means our NFT has successfully been minted to the email ID that we mentioned here. And in order to see what the NFT looks like, you simply need to go back to Crossman's website. So I'm going to open staging.crossman.crossman.com. And once this website loads up, you can click on my wallet. So this is where you can find all the NFTs that was minted to your Crossman wallet, which is tied into the email address that you use. So I'm going to scroll down and see if there are any NFTs that says video test NFT. And there you go. This is the NFT that we just minted using the Crossman Mint API. And it's as easy as that. You can see everything from the contract address, the token ID and the blockchain that it was minted to. You could also choose to display a QR code, which proves the ownership of the NFT. In simple words, it basically checks whether you're the true owner of the NFT or not. And you can also export it if you'd like. And congratulations, you have minted your first NFT. If this isn't your first NFT, then you probably learned how to do it the easiest way possible using a simple API call that Crossman provides. If you minted it to a wallet address instead, you can find it on the Blockchain Explorer uh, or you could find it on the marketplace like Rarible or OpenSea by connecting your wallet. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope this gave you a quick overview of how to work with the Mint API. 
Thank you for watching and it would mean a lot to us if you consider subscribing to our channel and leave your feedback in the comments telling us how we can improve. See you guys on the next one.